Hello there, the time has come to shoot some more film, and I will this time also use a solid camera, but I have upgraded to a rangefinder, or to be precise, a Sorky 4. Right, so this camera was made by the KMC company in Moscow from the 1950s to the 1970s, around thereabouts. And like many Soviet rangefinders, it was based on the German Leica cameras. So in this video, I will give an overview of the camera and a short guide of how to use it. I found this uh, Sorky 4 in a flea market for quite cheap, or at least compared to the prices you see for them nowadays. When I got it, it came with this nice leather case also, but I haven't really used the leather case so much, I just detached the lower part from the upper one, and yeah, it's a quite nice case for the camera. And also there are no, nowhere to attach a strap on the camera, or this model, the Sorky 4. Some older models have the straps directly on the camera, but this one you need the leather case if you want to have straps with it. So let's have a look at how this camera is used. First of all, there is one very important thing about using Soviet cameras, and that is that you should never change the shutter speed before you have wound up the film. And the film is wound up with a knob and not a lever like on your cameras. And then to change the shutter speed, well, you just lift up this knob here and turn to your desired speed. Like that. And as you can see, when I wind it up, it also moves, and then when I fire the shutter, it goes back to its original position. Yeah, so that's also one reason why you shouldn't move it around because it can confuse the mechanism. And the shutter speed is available, go from 1,000th of a second to one second. And then there is a special 1,30th of a second, which is the flash sync mode, and also you have bulb. As you can probably see on this camera, you only have from 1,000th to 60th. And that's because of the red text that shows the other uh, shutter speeds, it has faded away and it's a common problem with this camera or this model of this camera. If you want to use the bulb mode and don't have a remote release and don't want to press down the button all the time, there's one nice feature in this camera. If you press down the shutter and rotate it, it will stay pressed in. And if you want to release the shutter back, you just rotate it and it goes up like that. And if you move left on the camera, we have the rangefinder. And if you don't know what a rangefinder is, it's basically lining up two different uh, pictures on each other, and when they are lined up, you know the picture is in focus, so it's a very handy, handy feature to have on a camera. On the side here, you have a small lever which controls the diopter for the rangefinder, so if you're using glasses, you can still use to get the right focus. In the middle, we have a cold shoe, and on the front, we have the flash sync connection port, so you can use a flash. I almost forgot to mention one thing, if you want to use the flash, uh, here under the shutter speed selection dial, there is this ring which can be rotated and you have two settings on it one is uh, x and one is m if you're using an electronic flash it should be on x the m mode is for uh, bulb flashes so it's they need to have a delay because it takes a short delay before they actually flash so the shutter need to be released at the right moment. And the culture can be used for other attachments such as a light meter, since there is no built-in light meter in this camera and also there is no way to set the ISO, so you have to remember what ISO you're using. There are also accessories for framing the image, for example there's a third finder if you want to use any other lens than a 50mm. This range finder sort of corresponds to the field of view of the 50mm lens, but not exactly, so give some margin when you're taking picture if you don't have any other finder. On the front there is a self-timer and to use it you just wind up your film and you pull it down like that, uh, press the button and it will take a picture by itself after some time. I don't know how many seconds it is, but you can probably count it. <laughs> Right, there it goes. So the lens. For this camera I got the Industar 50, which is a 50mm 3.5 lens. There's also a Jupiter 8 50mm f2 lens available. That one is supposed to be better than this. I haven't used it so I cannot tell, but this lens is not bad either. I've taken... Yeah, I mean, the sharpness is quite okay on it. The lens is focused by moving this wheel here, and it goes from 1 meter to infinity. The aperture is controlled with this uh, small wheel here on the front. And I have to say this wheel is a bit flimsy. I mean, when I'm focusing, I've sometimes changed the aperture by mistake because they're really like close to each other and you can... Yeah, it's something to keep in mind that you don't put the aperture in the wrong spot by mistake. Yeah, it would have been much better if the aperture was actually just here on the back of the lens. But yeah, what can you do? Maybe the Jupiter 8 has, is better designed in that way. The lens mount is a 
no, standard M39 lens mount, so you can find plenty of Soviet lenses or even Leica lenses for this camera. So that's quite nice. So let's get to the fun part, how to load film. The back is open in a bit different way than in your cameras. You don't have a latch, instead you have these two things that you have to turn, like that. And then the whole back comes off like that. And on this camera you can probably see that this does not look like an original part and when I bought this camera, I had not noticed that the film optic spool had fallen off or disappeared. I don't know what had happened with it, but it, there wasn't. When I got home and tried to load the film, I noticed that something was wrong. So I improvised my own by just using some paper and tape to make this rod a bit thicker and then tape the film onto it. It works, but I will like also show on my Fed 2, which pretty much has the same loading mechanism, although the the actual spools are not interchangeable, unfortunately. So first of all, we take out the spool and put the film in here under this metal thingy. And then you need to get this spike into a sprocket. Yeah, like that. And then the next step is to put the film in its place and the spool in its place. And then just advance the film and it will hold on to it here. Yeah, so how to load out the proper spool? Well, first take the film, put it in there, and I'm gonna put it around here, and then tape it on from this side. But you need to keep in mind so it that comes, lines up with the actual uh, sprockets so on the film advance, otherwise it might not load properly. And it could be good to take up some slack this point like that and now I just there's even too much now here be more like that this is a bit fiddly but it should work and I take my piece of tape Right. Then again, I need to take up some slack here. That's, I mean, you should in any case do this while loading the film. Right, now it seems to be okay, but I'll advance a bit to see. Yeah. This works quite well. And it's will of course sit flat when I put on the back. Right, that's how to load the film the improvised way. And then put the back on, of course. Don't lose the back. <laughs> Close it. And make sure it is properly seated there so it doesn't come off. Right, so when you have advanced the film, well, as usual, just rewind it a little bit, take up the slack then you know if it has been loaded correctly or not because this will move. And then advance three times. To set the frame counter, first uh, wind up the film, it makes it a bit easier. And just turn this wheel so the zero lines up with this dot here, which is easier to set than done sometimes because this one is a bit stiff. Right, so now I'm about at one, so I will to demonstrate move it forward once. And we should land on one. Rewinding the film is a bit different on this camera than from others because you don't have this uh, button on the bottom to release the advance mechanism. Instead, you have to press this or turn this ring here under the shutter. And it should go down lower. And now you should be able to rewind the film by pulling this knob up and turning it backwards. And now it's, I can feel and hear that the film is coming. Right, and now I have reached the end. I'm just open the case. Mm. 
And there we go, the film has been rewound back. And usually I prefer to keep some leader out because I developed the films myself and it's easier to get the film out of the canyon so when you have a little bit of a leader on the end. And when we have rewound the film, don't forget to turn this one up also. And sometimes the shutter button can also remain down after you have uh, rewound the film, so turn it also so it comes back up. Otherwise the film advance will never stop turning and you'll be a bit confused at what, what happened. <laughs> right, so that was a short guide of how to use the Sorky 4 and also now hopefully you will also be able to use it. If not, you can always ask a question. But in any case, I think that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!